If you've ever thought about starting a podcast, chances are you've wondered, is it too late to start? Is the podcast space too saturated? Maybe I shouldn't even try. And I am here to tell you, it is not too late to start a podcast. In fact, I think right now might actually be the perfect time to start a podcast because in my opinion, it's easier than ever to grow an audience. Plus we're at a point in time where you don't need a lot of technical expertise to get started. There are so many great resources and apps out there that make the production process very easy. And you can take advantage of short form social media media content to quickly grow an audience that will discover you through your clips and end up being a listener of your show. So don't worry, we're gonna get into all of the tech and the growth strategies in this video. Cause I'm gonna dive into what I would do if I was starting my podcast over from scratch today. By the way, this video is sponsored by Riverside and they are my go-to application for all things podcast content creation. Not only can you record interviews online and get studio level quality, but you can also use their new AI features to automatically generate engaging clips for you to post on social media. But we'll talk more about them later. The most successful podcasts have a very strong format, a structure that regular listeners can get used to and come to depend on. Being successful in the podcast space really is all about integrating yourself into your listeners' regular routine. So you need to be dependable. You need to have a really solid structure. When I first started my podcast, I treated each episode like it was a unique YouTube video because I started out on YouTube. So that's what I was used to. I would come up with a separate concept and script and format for every single episode. And that was all fine. I think I was creating valuable content, but it wasn't doing anything for me to create that consistent listenership and community around my podcast that would have some idea of what to expect when I released a new episode. Essentially by making every single episode an island, like a standalone piece of content, I was allowing listeners to come in, listen to one show and then leave and have no buy-in to future episodes and no curiosity about what I might deliver next. Recently, I switched things up with my show. It's called the Creator Club Podcast, by the way. And I introduced a new format where I would still have a different kind of deep dive topic around content creation and social media marketing each week. But I have two segments that I include every single time my creator Q&A, which is basically me answering a listener submitted question, and my creator economy news segment, which happens at the end of the episode where I share a news update about the creator economy. I found bringing in these two segments is a really great way for me to pace out my episode and it gives my regular listeners something to expect. They know there's always gonna be that listener question, they know there's gonna be a news update at the end and they know there's gonna be valuable content shared throughout. So it just provides that structure and that routine. It's also great when you're building out that dependable structure to your show to integrate some references, some inside jokes that really helps with community building and helps your listeners feel a part of the show. Overall, it's just important to think about how your listener is going to consume your content. Are they going to listen to it? You know, on the day that it comes out on their morning commute, on their like lunchtime walk, it's going to be part of their routine. So you want to make your show something that they can depend on. Once you've got a great structure that you can deliver week to week with your podcast, the next step is to create a social content strategy. Let's just cut right to it. This is exactly what I would do to promote my podcast across social media platforms if I was starting from scratch. I would create a content calendar that includes posting three to five times per week on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube shorts. I would also record a video version of my full length podcast and upload that to YouTube in addition to uploading the full length audio version to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all of those other platforms. This is really the amazing thing about podcasts. It is an hour long of content or maybe 30 minutes. Either way, it's a long piece of content. It's a huge repository of clips that you can repurpose to be consistent across short form social media platforms. And particularly, I think podcast clips are really having a moment on TikTok lately, especially interview shows. There's so many new podcasts that are blowing up because of the short and 
snappy clips that they're uploading to TikTok. This is the perfect gateway to get listeners to discover your show. And this is particularly why I think starting a podcast now is so much easier than it was a few years ago when we didn't have these short form platforms with algorithms that help people discover content they were interested in. Back in the day when you had to depend on people searching for your show in Apple podcasts, it was a lot harder to find listeners. Now, I know this concept of this very extensive content calendar can feel a little overwhelming, but don't worry. I'm going to talk you through the process so that you could create a long form video, long form audio, and three to five clips and post that every single week, which will really help you grow a podcast audience quite rapidly if you can stick to it. Okay. So here's my suggested production setup. First of all, get out your laptop. This is where you're going to record your podcast, but to increase the quality, I highly suggest using your phone as a webcam. If you have a MacBook and an iPhone, all you need to do is plug your phone into your computer and it will show up as a webcam option when you go to record. So I would plug my phone in as my camera, but I would also plug in my favorite microphone. I like this Vocaster setup, but I know it can look pretty intimidating. If you just have a USB microphone, that's great too. So I've got my phone on a mini tripod behind my laptop. I've got my microphone plugged in, and then I'm gonna open up Riverside so that I can start to record my show. I essentially have a studio quality podcast recording setup here, which is awesome and it's super easy to do, but the most exciting part is what I can actually do with all of this content that I'm recording after the fact. Okay. So this is an episode of the creator club podcast that I recorded in Riverside earlier today. Riverside makes it so easy to edit with their AI tools. So if I just click go to editor, you'll see that the entire podcast has been transcribed on the left side here. And I'm actually going to be able to edit the podcast by selecting text. For example, if I wanted to get rid of this section, I would just highlight it like I would a Word document and then I could hit delete. And as you can see down here, it has removed it from the actual episode. Another awesome feature, which every podcaster will appreciate is that you can automatically remove all of the silences. So if you pause to read your script or pause to take a sip of water, just click remove and it'll automatically edit those out. Plus Riverside makes it easy to add in your intro and outro. So if I press the plus here, I've already uploaded my intro file and I've already uploaded my outro file. So I can tack those on super easy, but it's not just the long form content that Riverside makes easy. You can also automatically generate engaging short form clips. So if I click on generate, clips on the magic clips button here, it's going to find the best moments from throughout the podcast that I can turn into reels or TikToks. For example, check out all of these clips that Riverside magic clips generated for my interview with my friend, Molly. There's a ton of them and they're literally already labeled with what we were talking about in the clip. So I can just open this up and click edit. I can really easily change the style of the caption to be whatever I like. You can change the font and the size. Riverside has you covered on so many things that used to take me literally hours and it's just so seamless. By using Riverside, you can really streamline your process from producing the podcast to editing it and creating the promotional content all in one spot. So if you want to do all of this for your own podcast, make sure to check out Riverside. I have them linked in the description below. And if you use my code KD15, you'll get 15% off. A lot of creators spend a lot of time stressing about microphones, recording setups, editing software. And as important as all of that stuff is, the main thing that is going to set you apart and help you be successful as a podcaster is really consistency. Like I was saying at the beginning of this video, the main thing about how people consume podcasts nowadays is it's a part of their routine. I go for a walk every morning. I expect my daily news podcast to be there so that I have something to listen to on my little silly walks for my silly little mental health. And likewise for the other shows that I consume, I know that they're going to upload every week. 
I want it to be there. It's a part of my routine. So you need to make sure that you offer that same consistency to your listeners. Create a content calendar and then actually stick to it. If you're having trouble creating a content calendar that you can kind of visualize and that helps you stay organized, I actually have a free Notion content calendar template. I'll link it in the description. You can check it out. It just helps you to stay on track with all the different clips and main episodes that you're gonna be posting. When it comes to that actual content breakdown, like I was saying before, one episode per week, post the video version on YouTube, post the audio version on all the audio platforms. Anchor is a great resource for this. You can upload your audio file in one place and it will help you with distributing it to all the major podcasting platforms. And then when it comes to your short form content, I would make all of your clips 60 seconds or less so you can post them on shorts, TikTok, and reels without worrying about getting cut off. Three of the clips you post each week, I would recommend grabbing from Riverside's Magic Clips feature. So it'll be a direct clip from your show and it's so easy because AI is literally choosing it for you so you don't need to do a lot of editing. And then the other two for variety, I would do a mix of like B-roll clips with text over top. You can use quotes from your show, but just make it like a trending audio with some aesthetic B-roll and maybe some text on top. Then of course you wanna make sure that you have the full length version of your show linked in all of your social bios. You can link to all the different platforms on something like a link tree page, or you can check out Chartable, which is this free app that I've used for years where it automatically generates like a menu for you that has icons for all the different platforms where you have your podcast uploaded. So when people click the link, they can choose which platform they want to go to. Finally, when it comes to being consistent, it's important to know your own limits. So when you're first getting started, if you're not sure that this is something that you can commit to in the long term, don't be afraid to start out with just one season. Maybe do one season of 12 episodes, plan it out in advance, do some batch recording ahead of time so you don't end up kind of getting stressed out and doing stuff last minute and see how it goes once you post those 12 episodes with all of your social promo, see what response you get, and then decide from there whether you'd want to do it on a continuous basis moving forward or if you wanna go season by season. Growing a successful podcast in our current digital landscape is all about coming up with a strong and memorable concept for your show and taking advantage of short form social media platforms to get your show discovered and also just being very consistent with it. Those are truly the building blocks that you need to work with in order to grow a successful podcast right now. If you want to see a more holistic plan for building a creator business, whether you are starting a podcast, making a YouTube channel, creating content on Instagram or TikTok, you're gonna wanna check out this video next where I cover content creation, monetizing it, basically what I would do if I was starting over as someone wanting to become a full-time content creator right now. So check out that video next. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having adventures and following your dreams and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.